This is Conspiracy Theory, starring Donald Vaughn Griffin, Karen Torres, Leslie Danneberger, and me, the GM, Brandon Blackmore. Tonight's game is brought to you once again by the delightful and refreshing Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Because if I mention it enough, maybe they'll give me some for free. But I won't hold my breath. So anyway, they also last have week. a very good seasonal selection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just. Because you see, it's already making a difference amongst your com consumers. I'm just trying to uh, will myself a gift card for Best Buy so I can start on getting a new computer. Mac, Mac. Oh, um, somebody had a Chromebook for sale for 150 bucks. Who was that? Was that Amazon or Best Buy or Costco? One of those. Um, so the time to buy a new laptop was yesterday. <laughs> <coughs> Good luck with that. <coughs> yeah, that's how I ended up with uh, Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> Yeah, last computer game I bought was I bought a lifetime sub to Star Trek Online six months or so ago because oh. I really wanted to fly around and blow things with the spaceship <laughs> and I played mm -hmm. it really heavily for like a month and um, not so much in the last two what month is this? <laughs> two, two months? <laughs> two and a half months? So, but I know that I can anytime I want to that and yeah. Champions Online, which I also have a lifetime subscription to. I think there's one more. Oh, Secret World, but not Secret World Legends. The original Secret World. I got a lifetime sub to that. Uh, and then they stopped supporting it and came out with Secret World mm -hmm. Legends, which is designed to be played with a video game controller. Mm -hmm. And it sucks, so I stopped playing that. <laughs> oh, well. Too bad. Secret World is really cool. Well, I I, I got new uh, Jake convinced me to get New Vegas and all of all five or nine or however many DLCs uh, because it was ten bucks for them all. You know. So <coughs> he was like, if you're if you if you've ever had the slightest thought that you might want to try Fallout, right now ten bucks gets you New Vegas and all the goodies. It's supposed to be muted, but you could hear that. That's weird. And so, well, I hope you enjoy your Fallout game. Is that the one that has the Shoney's uh, yeah. big boy as the, like the mascot throughout the whole thing? No, that, you're thinking of Vault Boy. It's not the Shoney's big boy. It's a dude in a blue jumpsuit. But yeah, it's it's all the 1950s Adam Punk. It's basically if if the 1950s view of the 1980s with like the atomic powered cars and trucks and all of that had led to a 1960s atomic war and you're like in the 2400s for, so it's the game I was thinking you know, it's yeah, post-apocalypse one around the landscape and yeah, fighting uh, robots and stuff that kind of thing yeah mid-century atom punk style Yeah, cool Yeah, cool. Well, have fun with that there's like, there's like five or six of them by now so, really, wow. Okay, when we yeah. last left our... And four is the big one, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> when last we left our Intrepid <laughs> Adventures... It's not muting when I... Testing, testing... It's unreliably muting when I put the thing up. I'm gonna have to, like... Manually with the button. Yeah. Alright. Anyway, yes. We were, you were, in... Um, Denver. And mm -hmm. you guys um, were sent by Max, who showed up as a hologram on John Morgan's laptop. And then um, went to Denver. There was an alien signal that somebody received on their, their, their laptop. You guys delayed the construction of the signal that the taken over reprogrammed people 
were building, uh, and you found a counter signal to counteract the alien signal, and uh, broadcast it through speakers hot wired to a uh, rental car, and you essentially saved the city. Hooray for you! And then you left. Mm -hmm. Well, we took the rental car with us because we're not going to be able to return it. <laughs> I suppose. Well, that's up to you. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> after all that we've done with this thing, I'm not sure it's returnable. Yeah. There goes that alias. Or <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm sure he's got plenty of them. Yeah, what do we call him? <laughs> John? John? <laughs> okay. Alright then. Um... So, where are we at? So you're outside hack, Denver. Hack, hack. Uh, John Morgan has a bunch of mainly weird, ordinary receipts for things that kind of make a pattern of movement. Things like um, drive through food and um, gas station, filling up with gas or diesel, and things like, things like that. Mm -hmm. Let's this character whose name I keep forgetting because it's not what where do you go? Alan Alan, Alan. Alan Brennan mm -hmm. Alan, uh, you got a bunch of emails and a few transcripts of telephone conversations that don't directly point to, yeah, this person had your team killed, but do kind of show a pattern of people who are talking around something and you're yeah. trying to make sense of that. So we're going to assume that John Morgan and Alan are busily going over their respective care packages from Max and the network. Yep. And uh, meanwhile, Charlotte, Charlotte and Mark Savage are talking about where you guys are going to go next. So where are you going to go next? Um, Greeley or Cheyenne? Because one of those two, I'm getting a big steak. <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever you want. It's an it's it's an hour to Greeley, but it smells. But the whole town smells like a slaughter yard. Is that good it's, or bad? It's two and a half. It's two and a half to Cheyenne. <laughs> well, that, either one will, uh, whichever you think is better, because it will give these two time to decide where the, where we're going in the long term the next uh, run, of, run of fun. Yeah, besides, Wyoming would be a great place to ditch a car we bought and we rented in Pueblo. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Wyoming bound. Okie doke, sounds good to me. So you head to Wyoming. Great. <laughs> and Cheyenne, you get a steak? Wyoming. Cheyenne, Wyoming has some of the best steaks. That's like in the his literally in like the social studies books. Yeah, it's uh, what is it? It's Amarillo, uh, Cheyenne. Um, I'll take your word for it. So you guys go to Cheyenne. You go to a roadhouse Kansas. or something and get some steaks, um, right? Cheyenne, the Cheyenne Steakhouse. It's the Great. place. Awesome. You go and you Cheyenne, get steaks. Yeah. Or whatever else the rest of you want to eat, and um, sounds yeah. good to me. by the time you, you know, get it, there, it steaks is steaks that cut with your spoon. steaks that cut with what? <laughs> steaks you can cut with a spoon. Oh, okay, great. So <laughs> you guys all have dinner. It's latish evening, say around nine or so. So. Uh, how focused is Alan on going through these transcripts? Because there's a lot to read. It'll take a while. Um, hmm, not so focused that if somebody talks to him, he won't respond. No, I mean, okay. Oh. Are you okay. so focused that you're not going to eat or sleep? Oh, no, he'll or... eat. He'll, he'll eat and sleep. And he will actually be social. <laughs> He's a werewolf. Cool. Of course, he's going to eat. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're going to Wyoming for steaks. 
Yeah, ex exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine you know he would have plenty of time on the long car ride. Oh yeah, we're gonna drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're. He will not take his turn driving. Okay. Um, all right, well, you have dinner, and um, you go over your various documents, and you're pretty sure you've kind of got a handle on what was going on. There's a guy who apparently was told by somebody else, but he doesn't mention who, that someone has become a problem and a security risk. And that person exchanges some words with another person and they don't explicitly tell the second person what to do. But then the later thing is a second person having a conversation, talking all around a topic without actually saying it. But you know that what they're talking about is burning an entire group. And uh, by context, you assume it's your group. And then uh, later on is in the pile of documents, virtual pile of documents you got, is the actual command, which was sent from somebody uh, in MI13 to somebody else in MI13, no, somebody outside of MI13 telling somebody in MI13 to burn that particular team. And again, they kind of talk around it and they use code words for it, but that's what they're talking about. Did they think we were security risk? Is because you were sent the earlier document said something about a security risk. Is that what they thought we were? Was a security risk? What seems to have set it all in motion is the very first person uh, saying to mm -hmm. the second person that a specific individual was a security risk. And they were afraid that that person would talk. So I need to find out who that security risk was and see if it was a member of my team. And if not, see if you can get them to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it's not you. Oh, I'm not, well, I, I never was a security risk. As far as I'm well, if you, yeah, but if they consider you a security risk, it might be time to talk. <laughs> I, if I will, if they did consider me a security risk, I'm absolutely not sure why. I wouldn't have. The training was too good for that. But I can do some research on all my men and see if any of them had a reason to uh, become a risk, aka financial troubles, such things like that. That's usually what causes it. Yes, I know. I have a thick course on that at work. <laughs> yeah. It's one, of the reasons that, it's one of the reasons I've noticed that your country doesn't hire people if it, for federal jobs if they've got money problems. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. I, uh, there was a guy spent three months in for not having his uh, fines paid up. <laughs> but if that was the problem with one of my people, I need to know. But I don't know why they would burn the entire unit just because of one person. <clears throat> Easier? <clears throat> well, these, these are all excellent questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I figure it was just easier. That might be. You could be right. But I would like to find out. First of all, I'd like to find out if this is one of my people that, is, that was the security risk. Well, like I say, they talk all around things. Yeah, it's, it's going to make it hard. So it's hard to say, um, but... Um... I will have to look more deeply into things. See if there's other sources I can find. Based on what I have here. I have well, research... <laughs> you got some names, anyway. But not yeah. of the people they're talking about. You have the names of the people who are doing the talking. Well, I or, in, also... or in two cases, you don't have their names. You've got like their like code names. 
-hmm. but you do know the name of like the very first guy and the very last guy in that chain of conversation okay you actually know the very last guy he's like your boss's boss at mi13 or was anyway was, yeah well i do want to start before i go actually into mi13 itself i do want to look into some of the backgrounds of my own people because i do need to know if there was a security risk amongst them Okay, uh, imagine John else. Morgan can help you with that sort of thing. Yeah, it might be somebody else MR, MI5 that was a security risk and somehow it translated to my team. In which case, that's something that needs to be known too. Okay. So, yeah, but we'll, we'll continue to sort and we'll, we'll see if we can find out about some of these names and see what's going on. Okay, well, evening passes uneventfully, and uh, mm -hmm. eventually you guys do what? Do you, do you stay in Cheyenne, or do you go somewhere else? Mm. I don't know, Steak idea was his idea. I mean, imagine, you know. Yeah, that's, that's uh, payback for making me uh, go all creepy, sparkly, when we could have just shot the damn tower in the first place. <laughs> The stakes is payback for that. So now that we've had them, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> okay. Fine by me. I, I'm, I'm always game for steak. Now what do we want to do? Um, most of my research into finding out what was going on with MI5 is going to have to be done in England. Probably. Or do we want to go find some more trouble to get into? Well, um, if you already know where to start in England, we can just go find a gate and head back. It's not like we can't come back out here easily enough. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, what, about an hour's run back into Boulder? Yeah, we can abandon the car, I guess. And then I can start looking into my boss's boss and see what he's up to right now. Too bad John Morgan's here. I'd ask him if he wants the car abandoned in the middle of the desert or driven off into a canyon. Yeah. So we gotta go get a second car <laughs> and drive both out to wherever, and then... <coughs> oh, I want to see you do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, jumping from the car at the last minute, the whole... <laughs> the whole ball of wax. I would actually get bonuses on my dice roll for that. <laughs> and here I thought you were just going to stick a heavy <coughs> rock underneath the, uh, uh, have the, have the, uh, uh, have it in park, stick a big rock on the uh, accelerator, and then with the door open, just like push it in the with a stick so you can watch it go. You'd think so, but remember, I'm a Stephen J. Candle character. <laughs> Hey. That's not how they'd have done it on the A-Team. Okay, fine. That's, it's just as cool because, you know, watching you <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, go for it. We'll, we'll, first, we gotta get, uh. yeah, get, we'll go ask uh, John to get, get us a second car first. I'm not walking. Yeah, or, or we could rent a car somewhere out here and drive this one, literally drive it off into the desert and bury it in sand. <laughs> Where it will be found 20 years from now, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll just we figure out what you're going to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and get a, a second rental. Um, yeah. Dispose of this one in one of the means he has mentioned, and uh, head back to Boulder. Okay. Yeah, see, this is why we need Lloyd. We need someone to make the decision of which stupid plan we're going with. <laughs> it's like, which of these plans sounds like the worst of the idea out of the two? This is what we need John Morgan for. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, we will uh, properly dispose of the vehicle. 
<laughs> and you head back to you know Pueblo to uh I guess to... Boulder. What about the door with... Oh that's right, that's right. There's a closer one in Boulder, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the one in Boulder is the exterior side door that goes to a storage room at a closed burger chef. Mm. Which was a hamburger chain a million yeah. years ago. Oh, I remember Burger Chef. I used to love their fries. So it's a brick building with a big pole in the, you know, out at the curb that goes up to a, a metal outline of a sign that is empty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it has long since been abandoned, and apparently nobody has uh, re remodeled it or put something else there or torn it down or built something else or whatever. It's just an abandoned building somewhere on the edge of Boulder. Yeah. And the exterior side door that goes to the storage room, you assume, is the entrance to the labyrinth. Yep. So Hold go. on a sec. Okay. All right, well then, head into the labyrinth. Yep. Cool. And heading to England? Is that your deal? Yes. Yep. Be- okay. Besides, besides Doc, you ought to report in. Let them know what we what kind of trouble we've been causing. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Considering I uh, lost that ugly fur. Sorry, Black- well, you- it's burgundy. <laughs> You mean the one they put all those tracking devices in? <laughs> I kept some of the I kept all the cool stuff. Enough to hopefully they could probably still track me, but hey. Ugh. Well, you know. You do what you do. Uh, all right, so you get yep. to London. Head on back. And then what's your plan? Oh. What's the plan? That's a good question. Um, if you need time, I can go ahead and transport it I mean, MI13 is not a very out there organization, right? It's sort of like the NSA. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. What? More, more, <laughs> more guns focused than NSA is. Then. Chances are they're not trying to be that private, so I can find out what this guy is doing right now. What I'd like to know. Which guy? The the boss of the boss, who you said is the last person in the chain. Oh, um, being that he's somewhere in the upper levels of the organization, uh, he's (laughs) where he is and what he's doing at any given time is not quite as secret as people who are actually out in the field, which is like Mm -hmm. really secret. Because he actually has an office, you know, yeah. and reports to people, and prime mm-hmm. minister calls him from time to time, that kind of thing. So you go to try to track him down. Track him down, see what he's Roll some doing. dice <clears throat> with your uh, spooky ex spy abilities yeah. or ex commando, whatever you are. Ex five. Okay. Just find myself two dice six. This bag has been jumbled up because when I went up to see my sister over the weekend, I also played a role-playing game at uh, Chessie Con, so... Cool. Fun. Okay, where do all my... I know I have more six-sided. Where'd they go? On the bottom, of course. I have a total of seven plus three for my being x <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, well... They've got pretty good security, and John could get into it eventually, but you are pretty sure you know where he is. Okay. So I take it he's can... still pretty much got his position, nothing's changed? Yeah. Okay, so we know where he is. How about the yeah. first guy in the chain? What's he, is, he more, is he more secret, or is he out there in public? Um, he's... Like the undersecretary to the assistant to the 
um, ombudsman for the department, for the committee, to assess the value of farmland in Ulster or something like that. It's like this back corner, third basement down kind of position. So paper. he's either spying where he's at, or what does he have to do in MI5? And MI13. But yeah. MI13, yeah, I know, I know what I meant. <laughs> Good question. I think we're gonna start since I know where the big guy is. Let's start looking into this little guy. I want to see if he's just pretending to be what he is, or whether he really is what he is. Because that's why I need to find out what the heck is going on here. Well, so this fellow in the middle of nowhere who's the undersecretary of the whatever farming. Okay. How do you go about doing that? First of all, find out exactly where he lives. Find out exactly what this job is, theoretically. <laughs> find out exactly where his office is. He apparently compiles reports from other people and forwards them to the undersecretary, to the assistant exchequer of the department of whatever. Um, he's a paper pusher, literally. <laughs> He, they come in one. He they, he gets the reports. He writes a report about the reports, and then sends them to somebody else. On paper, that's his job. So we've got. Anyone know where he lives? Way, we have to figure out a way to discover what he has to do with MI13. AKA, is he a spy? And he's just pretending to be this paper pusher. And that's how we somehow or other. This is what we have to do. I think. Hmm. Why he would make the decision to terminate a team when he's some little paper pusher, God only knows. Unless he's the um, he's the possible leak. <laughs> but what he has to do with my team, I don't know. I'm looking into my team as well. But other than doing research on this guy and trying to figure out a way to spy on him, I don't know how we're gonna what we're gonna how we're gonna discover anything about him. Because I want to see if there's anybody in my team that has any connection with this guy. That's probably one of the ways to look to check. Okay. <clears throat> I'll say that what John Morgan is working on is background checks on your, members of your team. And you can tell him their names, where they lived, you know, all of the mm -hmm. personal information you can actually remember about them. Um, Hmm? And since we have the name of this guy, I can say, can you look into their backgrounds and see if they've come in contact with this guy at all? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay that's <coughs> I guess I'll roll for him. Yeah, I don't need to roll because I'm the GM. I can just make it up. Okay. <laughs> he's he's typing furiously for a while while you guys do other things. Um, he can't find anything that triggers red flags to him as far as their their finances or anything like that. There's no suspicious deposits or withdrawals, their bank accounts. There's no suspicious purchases that he knows of that he can find. They all seem to be in financially good shape, which is also usually- Well, they're not rich by any means, but they're not, they're not poor. They're not in like debt. grievous debt or anything. They all appear to be fairly modestly paid, middle of the road people who spend a little bit more than most people on things like gun oil. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So the risk, there are no security risk on that level. Is this guy? He doesn't see any red flags. Okay. Now, is this guy connected to any of them in any way? Have they worked together? Did they go to school together? Have any of them worked for this ex ex executor, whatever? Plus, there is uh, one guy, um, uh, Nick Butler. One of members of your team. Just, I mean, just a guy, member of the team, commando, like you, but one step down, who was part of, and your team that you worked with at MI13, they're not always all working on the same thing. I mean, like that big raid you did on the house with the uh, people who were cultists or something, that was like everybody in your department was in on that, and you were the head of that. But normally, it's smaller teams that go off and do things. Well, 
Nick mm-hmm. Butler, who is a guy you had worked with and you knew, um, he had been on an assignment doing something elsewhere that the Crown or somebody asked him to do and had pulled some of my 13 people t- to do. And this guy, and I'll go, I'll show you a picture of him. Where is he? Oh, that's weird. Like, I did a Windows update and it forgot all of my settings. It's just... Oh, no. Well, it's just, I just have to, every time I click something, I've got to tell it, yes, I do want you to... At least it's not the new Mac OS. Okay, so this is the guy here. Yeah. That's the guy who works in a (laughs) basement of some 600-year-old brick building somewhere in London. (laughs) And he's the one that had something that my team member had something to do with. Well, he's the guy who sent the request to your boss's boss originally. And this wasn't in the chain of stuff that Max gave you because Mm -hmm. this wasn't associated with that. This is something you found out since then. So... Like a month earlier than that, uh, like a month before your team got burned, uh, he, this guy, sent a request to somebody else that got sent to your boss's boss asking for temporary assignment of five uh, MI13 people. And Nick was one of them. Was one of them. And the other four were also MI13 people that you knew and you worked with, but they're not the ones that were referred to in the emails talking about the security leak or potential security leak. It was just a potential security leak, it wasn't actual. Say what? Can I find out who the other four guys are who were not burned? Oh, they're dead. They're dead too? Yeah, they're all dead. But then they weren't in my team though, they were just four other guys that went with. Um. Would they be dead? That's a good question. Because they weren't on the raid where all your people got killed. They must have I mean, you'd work with them, but... So are they dead or are they not? Into that. I think it's more suspicious if they're all dead, don't you think? It would be, yes. Yeah, okay, so they're all dead. But, uh, like, two died in an airplane crash mm-hmm. while on assignment. Um, one guy got a terrible case of stomach flu and died from it. And uh, another guy um, tripped and fell in front of a subway train. So something suspicious about this paper pusher. For sure. Okay, I think we need to go and uh, look into this paper pusher in a more personal way. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guessing that there's something not right about him. And MI-13 may have been innocent in all this, and because whatever he did may have gotten everybody else in trouble. <clears throat> Could be. Yeah. So we're going after Poindexter Paper Pusher? Yes, we are. With <laughs> pens in his pocket protector? Yep. And then after we find out what he's up to, we're going to find out if anybody else is in on it with him. Pretty posh. Uh, well, oh, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, we ha- if we have to, I'll, I'll go posh goth for you. <laughs> <laughs> so where is this paper pusher? In regards, we're in relation to where we are. Well, his office on paper is in a big brick building somewhere in London. Okay. Let's start there. Let's go try to find this theoretical big brick building somewhere in London. Now, it's a government building, but it's not like a high security government building. It's more like just an office building. So I'm wondering how, what, how, how, how tight the security is in buildings like that in England. Like, do they have metal detectors and that kind of nonsense, or is it just basically a big office building? Well, because theoretically, since nobody in England is uh, carrying, military people don't 
well, police don't carry guns. I mean, under, um, okay. I'm going to say there's cameras everywhere, but the building itself, because it's London, there's cameras everywhere. But yes. I'm going to say that the building itself doesn't have any, like, you know, extraordinary security or anything. Like, there's a couple of uniformed guards at the front desk, but they don't have guns or anything. They're just uniformed guards. They got, like, yeah, a truncheon. The English are very funny about carrying weapons, apparently. Um, Rupert Carrington is this guy's name. Okay. Rupert. Because Cuthbert would have been too manly. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert Carrington. The top shot is, first of all, I guess we need to find out if <coughs> this office is really, he, he really has an office in this building. Um, That's from what yeah. you can tell from the floor plans, because these are things that John Morgan can pull up for you. The floor plans of this place, uh, that floor doesn't have offices on that floor. It's basically mm -hmm. large open rooms with lots of desks and filing cabinets and fluorescent the lights. Yes. Second thing we got to do is I can't go in there because, well, maybe I can. Oh, I can go um, in there and no one can see me. Yeah. If this man just wanted to get rid of anybody who did whatever this job is with him, and just in general called my team a uh, security risk, just to get rid of him, and we were just the innocent background death in his effort to get rid of this one man, which is what I'm beginning to suspect, then he wouldn't recognize me from Adam. Yes, but I'm we were collateral. I'm thinking the rest of us were collateral damage just to get this one man. <coughs> yes, but who says anybody has to physically walk into this building? That's true. We know what he looks like, so I could just pop up. If you could, that would be great. All right. Just assuming I'm going to be. Yep. All right. I'll uh, once we get there, I'll. Uh, or at least to a safe, safe distance from it, I'll go ahead and, yeah, I can ask, for, I'll go ahead and ask, try to ask for, astro, the astral project into the, and walk, and walk into the, uh, you know, and go check out the, that floor. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's essentially just a big office building. It's got a lot of offices and different floors, and the floor you're looking for is it's literally like this second basement and uh, you roam around and it's people working under fluorescent lights with no windows and stacks of paperwork and typing on computers and you get back to a desk that has a little name plaque like they all do and it says uh, Carrington on it but the desk is tidy the computer is turned off and there's nobody sitting there it look like it's ever been sat at. It's got a nice little film of dust. Kind of hard to determine when you're in your astral form. Oh man, let me take the trash out. In any case, um, presumably there are cleaning people who come by periodically, so even if nobody sat here, it wouldn't be dusty. Mm. I mean, somebody does Ooh. empty the trash cans, unlike where I said. <laughs> Although if you if you could me. check in if you could check in the drawers. Nobody uh, leaves desk drawers completely clean. I can't exactly open them right now. I'd have to stick my head in them or something. And they'd be dark. Yeah. Like you could try that, but it's like, oh yeah, it's 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 dark. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, look for look for scuff marks on the floor around the uh, feet of the chair. Not at this carpet, uh, or or uh, it's you know. it's not carpet. It's uh, yeah. asbestos tile. Yeah. Yeah. Look for scuff marks around where the feet of the chair would be, because that stuff wears. It's you a six hundred year old building, and the tiles are <laughs> probably older than uh, any of you, so. <laughs> And also that just letting you know. He's also wrote that a chair on, on tile would eventually start showing wear patterns if it's been moved back and forth and sat in and yes. 
that it should show it should show wear not if they wax routinely um i work in a 30 plus old building with those type of tiles and they wax twice a year and you can't tell oh, okay we may have to come back when this place is closed and shut down the cameras temporarily just to get into that desk i'm Speaking pretty sure of that's which. probably Let's see. Um, oh, Charlotte's busy. Yeah. Alan's probably focused. Wait, how are you talking to Charlotte? <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> hmm? That's good. Uh, setting aside for the moment that you raise a very interesting point, what were you about to say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, like just setting that aside for right now. We're going to assume Charlotte cast some kind of uh, telepathy thing before she got going. Before we had certain questions, we told her, hey, look for this, hey, look for that before she left. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's, that's a good story. We should stick with that one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Uh, Alan and Mark make some kind of roll to notice a impending doom. Because that's what's happening. <laughs> it's so don't, don't let anything happen to my body, people. Wow, uh, that's uh, well. We should be a little bit more on the alert because we are watching her body. A, a, a ten um, on the dice plus three if it's uh, uh, something that a criminal would notice happening. Actually, I'm any... gonna. Go, what do you get, Leslie? I was just gonna say, could I add anything from the werewolf for the fact that I've got at least a good sense of smell? Um, well, you're inside of a sealed car or something right now, aren't you? At least I'm assuming you are. Actually, we didn't cover that. Where are you? Where Where is Charlotte? Where are you? Unless I can add my spy type stuff. I guess I could add my spy type stuff. You had spy stuff. So, yeah. But where Where are you guys? Probably in the car watching her. Well, one of us would be in the car watching her body. The other one should be outside keeping an eye on the car. Okay, so when you I'll, got to I'll London, you got a car. Body. What's that? When you, went to, when um, you got yeah, to London, sure. you got a car? Or whatever. I'm assuming we did. I'm well, in London, yeah. it's not that much of a... I'm assuming we got a van. Uh, pe preferably a panel van. I'm thinking but just like yeah, a I'm... white delivery van looking thing. Yeah. Not yeah. big. Like not big like a UPS truck, but small like a van. van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like every other white van tradesman in London. Yeah, that's basically yeah. what I was thinking you guys were saying. Yeah, I was assuming that, but then I was thinking, well, actually, I, why am I assuming that? Because... That may not be the case at all. <clears throat> okay. Yep. Anyway, Lord. so yeah, either um, either as a getaway driver or a teacher. Eyes oh. in the back of the head idea. Uh, it's a getaway driver thing. Okay, Alan is really focused on what's happening in the building and with the uh, communicating with Charlotte and so forth. And we're going to yeah. say that Charlotte set that up so that Alan could like walk her through things. Meanwhile... Okay. Mark Savage is on edge because this this whole situation seems eerily familiar to you, and this is really similar yeah, to. Yeah, like en engine is already running, car is probably in gear with foot on the brake. <laughs> yeah, this this whole thing is really eerily to what got you sent got you sent to prison. <laughs> so, <coughs> so tight. you notice. Um, someone walking their dog past you for the second time. Guys, time to bug out. We've been made. Well, I know she can get back to her body at any time, so yes, go. No matter where it is. Okay, a we're... Pull the cord thing. <laughs> so yes, go. I only... Okay. Yeah, I'm relocating the van. Okay. I, you know, very calmly, not like just like we finished up. Yeah, probably. Uh, let, let, tell you what, let's uh, open and close the back doors a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Slam, go ahead and open and then slam the back doors closed again. 
-hmm. and then we'll take off. Okay. Okay. Make all surveillance appear like we have just finished a trades person's work. You do that. You seem perfectly inconspicuous. You get in the van, mm -hmm. which is running. You casually pull away out of the alleyway or park, parking space, wherever you happen to be. To yeah, go I, see away. It, I see if John Morgan can fuzz out the CCTV <clears throat> so that we can get away from him. Because um, I assume they have eyes everywhere. Well, he's trying to, but there are so many. There's only, I mean, by the time he gets one killed, there's another one. Well, no, he can and set two me more. up a path. He can tell me what path to take to that he has set up a uh, well, he's, black, he's working on it. black spots. Yeah. But you're moving, and there are so many, it's making it difficult. Okay. So he's he can he can hit the ones that are, like, aimed right at you, but... That in itself might be seen as suspicious if somebody's actually keeping track of things. Yeah. So, oh, but up ahead in front of you, again, completely coincidental, um, a delivery truck uh, turns sideways and like backs up so that it's like perpendicular to the road, mm -hmm. uh, blocking the traffic, and people are honking their horns and. The guy in the truck goes, oh, Oi, we'll be out of here in a minute. Oh, we're speaking English. Oi, hey, you, study booger. Anyway, and, uh, and there's the guy behind the truck saying, Oi, come on back, come back. Hey, liberal. Oi, right there, right there, right there. Okay. And uh, guys are opening up the back of the delivery truck. Anyway, it's blocking the road in front of you. Up an alley? It's up to you, Donald. You're the driver. Run up an alleyway? Okay. I might point out, if you take a little lesson from London taxi cabs, don't let one-way streets stop you, don't let sidewalks stop you, and don't let alleyways stop you. Because that's the way they drive, too. <laughs> wow. wow. Okay. Well, then I won't be out of place. <laughs> We're going to go for a roll versus roll thing between okay. um, Mark Savage and the Pursuit. So, roll some dice. Another 10 seconds. Total of 13. And Brandon, having experienced the London taxi cab, I'm not lying. <laughs> he, he turns and goes the wrong way down an down alleyway. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately... Yeah, you just lay on the horn to let him know that you're doing it. <clears throat> no, no. The London taxi cab I was in, they did the one way, wrong way up. They drove on sidewalks. They ran red lights. They did 50 miles an hour and 20 miles, but they got you there as fast as they could. Wow. Yes, for real. I was in London. And yes, the taxi drivers are nuts. <laughs> They've also got the street map memorized, which is impressive. Yes. Because it's a medieval street map. <laughs> I know the London taxi cab after that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm 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 doing my good old uh, uh, Italian job best. As soon as uh, you turn down this alleyway, you realize what a f oh, you made such a rookie mistake. You went exactly where they wanted you to go. So, yeah, and and you, you realize it as as soon as you turn down the alley, you realize man, it. Because I rolled well too. They rolled really well crazy well which is actually pretty cool for me because um, usually i don't <laughs> yeah um you know what i'm gonna stop and use the sidewalk to back up <laughs> good for you uh that didn't something didn't close yeah, yeah, i'm gonna use the sidewalk to back up and go the other way Unfortunately, your your retreat is cut off, and up ahead of you is also in the process of being cut off. Hang on, I got I got something to show you here. <sighs> the problem is, is we got to get her back. I've got to I've got to call her back to her body then, because we may have to run. Yeah. Hard to find good spooky black ops outfits that don't look like either fetish gear or Boba Fett. <laughs> it's like it's like this. It's like I this. feel the same way about Wonder Woman outfits. <laughs> I'm calling you back to your body. By the way, I'm telling you, you better get back. I'm we have to run. 
I'm sure the fact that you guys were moving probably sent a little tug. Mm -hmm. Well, n no. While you're out in your astral form, you are oblivious to what's going on with your body. They could be cutting off your fingers. You wouldn't know until you got back. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, that's that's going to be... That's foreshadowing, is what that is. <laughs> so hurry up and come back. So, d so don't spend a whole lot of money getting your nails done. It might be a big waste. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um... Wow, this is close enough. These guys are pretty creepy looking. I'll do these. Oh, no, come on. A few minutes. There we go. <clears throat> um, uh, cars, or military type cars. Uh, no, actually, no, they're not even military cars. Delivery vans pull in behind you in the alley. So you really have only got one way to go, which is forward. And as you head toward the other end of the alley, more military, I mean, uh, delivery vans come in, and guys start jumping out, and it looks like you are vastly outnumbered by guys with rifles. And here's what's, uh, I'm almost done, and then you can do stuff. Their outfits, they're wearing, like, light body armor with uh, trench coats over that. They've got helmets with, like, a black face mask that has no eyes or anything. It's just a solid, like a motorcycle helmet kind of mask. Mm -hmm. But on the helmet right up here are painted red eyes on the helmet. Well, that's weird. Um, mm -hmm. Remind me to one? tell you about the screaming Muppet I saw on 295 that time. Or no, it was 270. Okay. But anyway... So I don't want that's, to that's what's game. happening. Just remind me to tell you about the screaming muppet. That's what's happening. Uh, you you appear to your your paths have been blocked. You've got an unconscious Charlotte. You've got John Morgan who has a laptop and a couple of you know detachable hard drives in his lap. You driving. John Morgan's. I mean, uh, Mark Savage is driving, and Alan is looking around, and you're thinking this is not a tactically advantageous situation. Well, I wish we could get into the labyrinth from here, but I guess you have to have specific doorways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid and I'm you guys... Definitely mentally calling, I'm definitely mentally calling Kieran back to her body. <laughs> Hurry. We may have to run. <laughs> I'm afraid you guys might get hurt. Bye. Uh, and you have to ask? True. But we can't let them take us because they will kill us. Well, you no, can, that's what you I'm try saying. Ramming. I'm you guys might get hurt. You could try ramming the, the, the cars ahead of you. You could try ramming I mean, Cars it's... ahead of me, nothing. They're soft, squishy things with guns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Yeah. I would try, I guess the best bet would be to try to ram them, unless you think it's not a good idea. Yeah, I, I, I am going to use my skill as a getaway driver to do the whole force my way through. Um, I would suggest, that, I guess the three of us in the back better just get as flat on the floor as we can. <laughs> I don't think this van is built for me. Okay. This van is not built for what I'm about to do now. <laughs> so what are you doing? Yeah, I'm sure. We'll go left to right. Uh, Mark Savage, what you doing? I am turning the wheel, laying on the horn, and ramming whatever it takes to get through or out or well, they're blocking whatever the road, kind of not a blocking the sidewalks. It's an alley. There's not really a sidewalk. It's a it's an alley. There's no sidewalk. You've got. And if squishy things get in the way, that's their fault. Okay. Um. Because I. Sorry. That's a, it's... it's the eyes painted on their helmets that have me worried. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what that is, as far as I'm concerned. If they were in all just like straight military gear. These are dudes doing their job. Exactly. Yeah. 
they're in other that makes them enemy that makes them fair game in this game that doesn't sound good they, they um, do appear to be aiming at weapons in your direction just um, like you know I must check something out real quick <laughs> so, so you're going forward then um yeah I, d I guess I've got too much wheelbase to uh pull a 180 okay um rolls and dice and, ramming speed and uh, we'll see you're just rolling against a straight number Ten see you total. need a 12 you need a 12 to a how much total I rolled a 10 total okay you <clears throat> and you smash into the, the cart the little delivery vans in front of you which are functionally no really no different from the one you're in I mean, they're yeah. not armored vehicles. They're just yeah. crappy delivery vans. But you, like, so punch one headline, up against one wall, and you smash yeah, the other I, one. Hmm? Just keep going. Headline, headline headlights up with axles, and it just boots them out of the way. Yeah, so the essentially the two that came in, that. you've got them wedged against each other, and you're <laughs> crunched against them. So they are, they are tightly wedged. They're not going to go anywhere. But... On the downside, you're not getting past them. Wait, wait. Not unless you back up again they, and get a running start pulled, again, maybe. Were they pulled in with their no okay? Um, were they pulled in with their noses toward us? Yes. Or straight across? Toward you. Oh. But slightly oh, staggered. Noses toward us. Oh yeah. man, I. And and you hit you hit one and it like skidded and hit the other one and that skidded and it <laughs> wedged in between the the walls of the alley. Okay, that's easy enough. I go for the back end of the forward one. Uh, Charlotte. Oh, am I on? Yeah, Charlotte. Yeah. Okay, you are in your astral form, and you're trying to find your way back to your body. Make a witchy woman roll. I rolled a nine plus four, so that's 13. Wow. Okay, that was you. You got back faster than I expected. Okay, Charlotte's eyes open, <laughs> and uh, when you're back in your body, your chest hurts all of a sudden, like from the seat belt, like <clears throat> like that, like against your sternum. Uh, the car, and the car is not moving. You're in an alley, and there's a couple of cars in front of you, and there's a couple of guys like up against the wall in black outfits and helmets with rifles and uh, there's like probably a guy wedged between your car and the cars in front of you that you smashed into and in the rearview mirror on the door behind you uh, there's a half dozen guys coming toward you with rifles aimed in your direction gosh I can't leave you guys for a minute <laughs> anyway that's that's pretty much what you do as you get back to your body. <laughs> Alan, what do you do? You're muted. Alan, what does Alan do? How many of them are in the rear? Say half a dozen. Bulletproof minus a werewolf? I'd probably not very much. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of what we can do. Um, can we back up? As a werewolf, it's not so much that you're bulletproof, it's just that the bullet holes don't really bother you that much, and they heal up pretty quickly. And you could back up, okay. sure. <coughs> um, not the chance of us uh, ramming speed in, the, in reverse before I'm forced to do something I re I'm going to regret. Okay. You like ready a weapon or anything? Uh, uh, ready a weapon or anything? Yeah, that's why I said I'm. That's why when I say I'm going to regret, meaning I have to kill people when I really don't want to. Um, <laughs> so I'm asking him, what's the chance of us backing up? Or do you want me to start shooting wildly? Or worse yet, doing something willfully? Uh, let me give it one more shot to get us out of here. Okay. I'm going to get a weapon ready, then, while he's giving it one more shot. 
Well, if you do try to go backward, you could you could get a a good running start because you've got the whole alleyway. Whereas yeah. going forward, you only you had a much shorter, you know, acceleration. Lead and up. I and I could maybe aim for the proper part of the other vehicle to knock it out of the way. Maybe. I mean, I assume you tried this time. It just didn't work out that way. You know. Well, but, no, obvious. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't. <laughs> no, you I tried. Had, it you just no, didn't work I, out that if way. I, if I you weren't had successful. Tried, I would have been hugging one of the walls. You just weren't successful. I'm going to assume you tried. You just weren't successful. Or okay. as successful as you wanted to be. Well, you try. I'm ready no weapon. Okay. Also, it's a front wheel drive car. Mm -hmm. So you could theoretically hit much harder with the back um, and not make the car undrivable as a result. Mm -hmm. Theoretically. Okay. Theoret theoretically. So you do. Go for it. I'll go for it. I'm ready when you eight. fail. Roll some dice. <laughs> nine, on, nine on the dice, 10, 11, 12. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Which is a worse roll than the one that got us into this situation somehow. <laughs> well, they rolled really well to ambush you guys, so... <laughs> You were at a disadvantage on that. Wow. <laughs> you, and they, they, they just, holy cow. Did they blow it? No, they rolled spectacularly well. I kind of wanted you to get away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you, I'll do it. I'll, do, I'll, I'll have them succeed in a slightly different way. You ram one of the cars behind you, you spin it just right, and you scrape along the brick wall on one side, and sparks fly in the window, and you scotch, you do a bootlegger reverse once you get back out to the street. And uh, you're, the back of the car is like all crunched up against one of the cars behind you. The guys behind you, who haven't actually done anything other than move toward you, are going to start shooting at you. Who would they shoot at? Well, you're the driver. Let's shoot at you. So there are six of us. I guess I'm returning fire when it becomes necessary. That makes sense. Just that. Oh. As they begin firing, I let forth my fierce battle cry. Not in the face! Not in the face! <laughs> yeah, I've had, I've had villains say that in the past. Well, it's um, Arthur. It's Mothman. Oh, it's older. Than, it's That's older than best. that. <laughs> it's well, way yeah. older than that. Um, I mean that that uh, trope is is way older than that. But that's that's what he's doing. Um, let's see. I need to attack you. Eight plus your um. Where, where the hell's your character sheet? I don't have it open. Duh. Give me a minute. I can figure out what I need to hit you. Oh, there you are. We will say this is your getaway driving sk skill. So I need to do 11 to actually just hit you. So six of us are going to shoot in your general direction. Uh, I'm going to give you a plus one because you're actually in the car. Uh, so that'll give you some cover. Actually, I'll give you plus two because you've got, got some cover. So 11, 12, 13. 13 to hit you. Suck, 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 suck. Oh, wow. Two two bullets. Two rifle rifle rounds. Um, puncture the metal of the door. And like one like hits in the thigh. And the other one's like hits in the arm. Uh, you are down from... for is the actual damaging stuffs. Health pool. Oh, that's right. This game uses health pool. You are down two health from whatever your normal maximum is. Hello? Hello? Donald? Hello? Yeah. Ow, 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 ow! It's also very loud. I mean, they're, they're suppressed, but as, it's still 
when there's a half a dozen I, I, rifles shooting at you, it's still pretty loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, as as I make the bleeding bootlegging turn, I, I scream out the window, That hurts, you know? You got hit? <laughs> Somewhere nearby, you hear people screaming. <laughs> <laughs> So, Charlotte, um, you are, as you get flung backward and, whoa, everybody in the car is, like, doing this as it's, like, spinning around and, uh, you know, like that, <clears throat> you are narrowly missed by some rifle rounds that go by. Uh, and you, shortly after that, you realize that a couple of them actually hit Mark Savage, and uh, but he's not dead, not yet anyway. What do you do, Charlotte? I'm far back. Hang on, Charlotte's turn, and then you can do your thing. Yeah. Uh, we're in a moving vehicle, and it, a radically moving vehicle. I can't really, you probably cannot do very, focus very well on the people outside the vehicle, so, uh, heal Mark, because he's the driver. All right. Let's see. Healings, healings, healings. Okay, if you do t 10, you can give him back one health. Oh, up to one half of a health pool. Oh, yeah. What, what's your total health, Donald? I have no idea how that is. Uh, oh. It's whatever your most not dying uh, thing. We'll say four. Your health's four. We'll say four is my symbiote. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're down to two. So. If, I'm down the roll half, of half my health. Right. So, Charlotte, if you get a 10 on your witchy woman roll, you can restore him back to full. Because he's only down half. <laughs> Woohoo! Boxcars! Wow. Um, you, how do you want to describe what happens to Mark Savage? Well, if I can't touch him, I guess it's like uh, uh, I'm assuming you're in the front seat with him. Oh, okay. So. All right, then I just rest a hand on his on his on his on him because it's probably like a manage uh, it, it the seatbelt off, and it's like um, a cooling sa of it's like a cooling wave of of of, of wellness just permeates from my hand to, down into the rest of you. Like cool. <laughs> Whoa. We need to bottle that, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. um, the bullet wounds are through and through, so there's no like bullets popping out of you or anything weird like that. It's just, <laughs> that it just cool. you just heal up. Yeah. Uh, your pants and shirt are still bloody, and the car seat, the fabric car seat, is is uh, bloody. But you're yeah. fine. No, so yeah, another rental ruin. And now also that's... you. Spend a fringe to do that, Charlotte. Yep. I so. Now that's weird. What's weird? Usually my thing takes care of me like that. Hmm. Maybe it's never encountered bullets. Oh, well, it has. No, no, it... no. I've been shot plenty of times. I've been shot out a window. Well, yeah, but you, you didn't, window. like, Actually, activate it activated. or anything. Yes. Kick out. Okay. Jumping out the window while being shot and being shot out the window are the same thing, I keep telling you. It's it's not the same. <laughs> what you bullets do is not were, the same as what people did to you. Bullets were impacting me as I flew through a window. That mm -hmm. I call that getting shot out a window. No, next, no, no, it's now it's they stuff you went to a cannon and and shot you as a cannon out the window. I would consider, I would agree with you. No, See, I think you I you, you could have him. you could have activated the symbiote, but you didn't. <laughs> and, I didn't think uh, of it. Yeah, it's it's not. Sometimes it'll do stuff automatically. Sometimes it doesn't. That's I, all I, I was concentrating too much on driving. You were really focusing on the driving, is what was going on there. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. You're not dead. You're not even injured at this point. So just stop yeah. the <laughs> Oh yeah, so, no argument on the results. It's just we came about it by a different path than you. Alan. All right. I guess we have to open. There's no windows in the back of the panel truck. Is there? There's windows on the back doors of the panel truck. One on each Crash. door. 
fire. <laughs> Break one and then sh point out and shoot. <laughs> okay. Uh, you see a couple of uh, characters in body armor mm -hmm. and uh, helmets, and you shoot at them. Roll some dice. What do you need? All right, eight. my total is eight plus the three that goes with my military spy type stuff. <laughs> Okay, you can tell by the way they're moving uh, that they are not as well trained as you, but they are trained. Mm -hmm. Okay. So between their training and the body armor, you hit one guy exactly. You you fire off a small burst and you hit one guy exactly like in the chest. <laughs> okay. um, Whether it penetrates or not, as long as it knocks him down, that's what I'm hoping on. <laughs> it's not so much knocks him down as makes him like duck, because. Okay. Like, it doesn't, like, it hurts like a bitch, but it doesn't actually penetrate his armor. Not at this point. But you, there's only so much of that you can take before you start bleeding internally. So even if even if it doesn't penetrate the armor, eventually it'll just hurt you. And there's only so many times that armor can take that kind of hit before it loses its integrity and is no longer as bullet resistant as it used to be. Okay. It's kind of like an eggshell. You know, once you crack it, it's not as strong. Okay. That's kind of how real world armor works, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, um, that's what Ellen does. So, have our guys done stuff? When did they shoot? Oh, they just shot you. So we're gonna say our yeah. guys go between between oh, Mark Savage. Oh. Or we say the bad guys are going between Mark Savage and Charlotte. That's what we're gonna say. Now here's so, the question: is, is Mark Savage still driving as we speak? Yes. Putting uh, putting distance between us. Well, at it's... the moment, you're you're not moving forward at the moment. At the moment, you're like yeah, in the back, street, yeah. ready to pull off and, and drive away. Yeah, at but the he's moment, behind the wheel. Changing gears. If he had yeah. not been hit, and Charlotte had not had to heal him up, probably. It would have just been part of the whole thing that happened is you would have gone, uh, and be and you actually would be driving away. But because it kinda got interrupted by being hit with bullets, yeah, that kind of like broke the momentum of the escape a little bit. <clears throat> but now you're back in fine fighting form. Mark Savage, what are you gonna do? Um still try to escape, I assume. Sorry, roll some dice. A six on the dice, so a nine total. Wow. Not great. <laughs> no. I'm starting to escape. I mean, although, although, honestly, a six on the dice is average. I didn't that say was it was a, bad, just said it wasn't great. That was, a, that was a spot average roll. Actually, seven's average. Six is slightly below average. Oh my god! These guys are... That cannot... This is the best day these guys ever had. They have rolled oh my phenomenal. Goodness. You're kidding me. No. You pull out and and drive away from... Remember that very first delivery truck that was blocking the road that made you turn? Okay, you were driving away from that back the way you came. Okay? Yeah. Are you me mentally picturing that? Okay, behind yeah. you you see the delivery truck pull forward just a little bit and four motorcycles go zing, 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 out the back of the delivery truck and Grouch! and are ganging up on us. you. What? And come after us. Yes. yes. Well, and, be the and behind them there's, there's a couple more delivery vans but the motorcycles are the more pressing threat right now. That's what you got a rear gun for. Oh, I thought thing. it was what we had a rear bumper for. Let them get close and then brake check them. Yeah. Thud, uh, thud, thud, thud. <laughs> Just give me warning when you plan to do it, because I will be shooting at them. Okay, maybe you can take care of them before I get the chance. <laughs> Alan, make a uh, deadly super spy roll. Yeah. Okay. We did eight plus three again. This different variation of eight. <laughs> okay, well this is pretty easy. So, mm -hmm. um, if these guys are trained at all well, they will be expecting that kind of shenanigans, 
and we'll have some kind of plan to take advantage of it when it happens. Well, I have shenanigans. I'm planning to freak out. <laughs> I like her shenanigans. <clears throat> we'll be prepared for them. <laughs> um, I think at this point, it's worth taking a break for a moment, asking, is your plan to try to lose them? Because historically that doesn't work that well in cities mm -hmm. with lots of cameras yeah yeah uh or is your plan to try to find cover somewhere and like lay low and hope that they stop looking or maybe is your plan to find a defensible position and kill everyone who comes up at you until there aren't any more and then you get away so how, how about a doorway where I can drop these folks off without them getting caught, and then I can go crystalline and drive the van into the Thames? I like that plan. <laughs> <laughs> how close are we to the labyrinth at the door? That's another plan. Well, that's the opposite direction. So, that's that's not a convenient yeah, plan. Going through the doorway might be a good idea. If we, we just have you just have to catch a, a moment when we're out of sight of the motorcycles. And yes, hopefully not, hopefully there's very few cameras. Yes, except that it's way out, apparently out of our way to go that way right now. Well, it's the opposite direction, so. Yeah. There's that. Find, then let's just find a convenient doorway to hop into. Yeah. So when you say doorway, you just mean normal doorway. Or maybe go into a parking garage. Or out. You know, mm -hmm. into a business center, a business area with like shops and things that we can easily get lost in. Well, we don't really want to go to where there's a lot of pedestrians because someone can get innocent and get killed. Yeah. Okay. Um... Parking garage. That's my suggestion. One that you can go into and out of without stopping, and we'll just hop out somewhere and die behind a car or something. Let's see, there are four motorcycle peoples, so I'm going to roll some dice. It's like stairwell. Yeah, stairwell. So who's in the back seat is... Alan. Alan and John Morgan. Yeah. yeah. I'll say the first two are John Morgan, and the second two are Alan. Uh, John Morgan uh, gets a hit in the upper chest on one side by a bullet <laughs> and Alan gets hit twice and the guys behind you um, have very compact submachine gun pistols they that's submachine gun yeah they're very compact like an Uzi right you know what Uzi looks like with really long stick magazines and they're and whichever hand doesn't do the throttle that's a throttle. So left hand. And bullets are just riddling the back of the uh, little delivery van. Okay. We will, we're going to have to wolf out. So I can heal. <clears throat> oh, Charlotte, you were going to do something. Oh. Uh, hey, guys. Ice on the ground or ice in the, uh, in the air? Wall or floor? I think the ground would be good because we're we're talking motorcycles, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, motorcycles. I'm gonna go with the floor. Yeah. Okay. Sheet of ice behind us, across the whole uh, across the way, so they can't avoid it. Let's let's see how good their training is on motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. <Black -y. laughs> okay, you'll need a twelve for that. Oh, poopy. I only rolled a nine. Okay. You you try to concentrate, but between John Morgan screaming profanities at the moment and the whole, you know, defensive driving thing, <laughs> it's just screwing up your concentration. It does not cost you a fringe point because it didn't work. Um, but, like, behind you, you see, like, a car and a telephone pole go... Tsh and like get all iced up and then like a patch on the side of a building goes and ice ices up it just doesn't do what you wanted it to do um, 
Then we need to, we the need motorcycles to are still in pursuit, and behind them, further back, are a couple of small cars that are clearly also in pursuit. Um, delivery van type vehicles. McDonald's parking garage. <laughs> Mr. Savage, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Hey, roll some know. dice. Mm -hmm. If if you're not shooting and you're waiting and you're waiting for Mark Savage to rescue you, uh, Mark Savage, roll some dice. A <clears throat> five on the dice, so eight. Let me see what I got. Please roll poorly, guys. Just for a change. Okay. You were doing the whole defensive driving thing like a son of a gun. And one of the four motorcycles chasing you uh, tries to come up beside you, and you, you faint left, you go right, you faint left again, you brake, and then you go forward, and he tries to get ahead of you, and then behind you, and you tag his front wheel with the back bumper of the car, and he goes, ah! and hits a mailbox, and the, the motorcycle stops, and he flies over it, or she flies over it, it's hard to tell, they're in armor, um, and goes through the air about 15 feet, and then through a plate glass window. Mm -hmm. And then that's the last you see of that person. But the other three motorcycles are still behind you. Yeah. Okay. Brendan, my actual thing is to go wolf, and I am placing myself between the, the, them out there shooting and our friend uh, Mar Martin, whatever his John, so he doesn't get hit anymore. So you're you're wolfing out and putting yourself yeah, between between jo where John's yeah. sitting and the actual back yeah. of the van. Yep. Okay, but you're not leaping out of the van. Oh no no, I'm being body armor for him until okay, that'll work. Stop. <clears throat> I will say that you did that on your thing. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, oh, the three motorcycles that are still there, uh, they try to fire again. They have a limited number of times they can do this before they run out of bullets, but they can still shoot a few more times. So, wow. Fortunately, you are way harder to hurt now. Eight plus, and your wolfy thing is four, so that's 12. Okay. You get hit, quote unquote, by a good half dozen bullets that just like, like chew up your wolfy skin and goes into the meat but then just like just pops right back out and you like heal back up almost instantly uh, one bullet actually hits you somewhere like in your gut somewhere and mm -hmm. you feel like it like wedges on a rib or something and that one actually hurts so lose one health from that okay. where does that put you? because you, you actually already hurt a bit weren't you? yeah mm -hmm. but I should be starting to heal I should have been healing from the other hurt too when I changed You'd have to spend a French point for that. And, and like... I will. Yeah, I will spend. Okay. Spend All right, spend a French point. Roll some. Mm -hmm. Well, you make a wolfy healing type roll. <clears throat> if you get a twelve, you can heal back two. If you roll, I only got a ten. Ten. Uh, mm -hmm. heal back one. Okay. So you. Heal I'm back... hurting, but I'm, I'm since I'm just sitting here, mostly protecting John. I'm not doing anything too physical. Um, okay, cool beans. So that was it. Charlotte. Ah. Also, I'm assuming just this is my assumption that you are not just driving in a straight line. That Mark Savage is like making last minute turns and going down alleys and like going up on the sidewalk and then going back in the street like crazy, like a taxi cab driver. endangering bystanders kind of stuff. Optical illusion! <coughs> okay. Like what? Make it look like we turned right when we went straight. Ooh, or turned left. spookiness. Let's see. It only has to last long enough to get everything <laughs> I could do. Altering the terrain or environment in the local area in a way that does not seem out of place. Well, turning left instead of right does not seem out of place, so you, you only need a 10 for that. So. Okay. Spend a fringe, or roll your dice, or roll your dice, and if you succeed, spend a fringe. Roll the to... 10 plus 4. Oh, outstanding. So, Charlotte, and behind you, uh, you can't, actually, Charlotte's, I guess, looking backward, because she's doing it. And 
Mark Savage is probably glancing through your mirror, so you'll all see it, except for John Morgan, who's still cursing bitterly and uh, about getting shot. About getting shot. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I told you it hurts. <laughs> so what you see <laughs> is uh, at just as you are going to turn left, uh, Mark Savage. You see behind you, an, like another car that superimposed over the one you're driving that wah, turns right. And after you turn left and you're going down an alley, behind you you see your same car going down the other alley. So the motorcycles all ah, chase off after the other car. Can yes. I get that? In, can I get that in a portable 12 volt package? <laughs> Get us into a parking garage quickly. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, yes, Charlotte, I get us undercover. Charlotte, I think you'd better heal um, John. Let's see, that would be... If you got witchy points, it's a regular thing if you don't. Yeah. I've got, I still have to have my witchy points left. We're good. Okay. So you're going to heal who? I told him to heal John. Yeah. Okay. He's not here as a player, so I'm going to say you can heal him for free. Um, <clears throat> spend a French point. By free, I mean um, without rolling. No rolling. Still got to yeah. spend a French point, but you don't need to worry about rolling. <laughs> so you cast your spell on John, and it heals up. And he's like, okay, what about my shirt? Can you fix uh, that too? I'm like covered in my own uh, blood. Of I'm all the blood to... you can be covered in, my own blood is my least favorite blood. <laughs> then take the bloody shirt off. Really? That's I mean, at least topic. when it's your at least when it's your own blood, you don't have to go through quarantine or mop down or nothing. <laughs> uh, John Morgan's trying to type, uh, uh, and now that his arm is or. You know, bullet wound is fixed. He's typing much more productively. Um, he's like, guys, I've got good news and bad news. <clears throat> I'm trying to knock out cameras as we go, but there are a lot of cameras around here, and there's only so many I can knock out at once. So, on the one hand, I'm pretty sure I covered our hiding place here in this parking garage, which I assume is where you guys are now. Yeah. The downside is, it was not subtle. Anybody who's actually looking at these cameras and is watching the pattern of where the cameras get knocked out is going to know roughly where we are. Now, I'm going to go out and do some false trails, but it really depends on the people trying to chase us being worse at this than I am. And not just a little bit worse, but like a lot worse. You no, know, we could go with... Savage's idea of letting him crystallize and actually take the van out, and we stay in the garage. <clears throat> it's up to you. Or, or, or find yourself some other non detective, <coughs> non detectable way of getting to the labyrinth or whatever. Uh, hot wire another car? I'm hardly not detectable right now. I don't intend to change back. Yeah, you, you, uh, Alan's the big bad wolf right now. Yeah. Yeah. Puppy. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, you're going to need an awful big hat and trench coat. I was thinking of collar and leash. No, collar and leash. This is a dire wolf. <laughs> Oh come on! I've seen really big wolf, a uh, big yeah. Big no, dog. have you have you have you ever walked an Irish wolfhound? <laughs> Seriously, I had a friend of mine had Irish wolfhounds. <laughs> As an adult, this dog looked me in the eye. <laughs> the generally their heads come up to about here on me. Don't just say you're a yeah. You're one of those. You know, backs up to, you know, about my navel. <laughs> well, there's one other way we can try. 
I was going to say hot wire. Access into the sewers. It might smell bad, but... Wow. These guys are rocking the rolls. Okay. Man. John says... Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't like uh-oh. Who are these? This is this is. I'm trying to channel Lloyd just a little bit. He's like, "Who the fuck are these guys? This is insane." I mean, did we? Are we wearing tracking devices? There's, is one of you a mole? How is it that they're tracking us this 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 easily? John, these people burned my team. <laughs> Let's go. We need to go somewhere. You want us to ditch out here while you drive the van out and have them follow you? We'll try to find our way into the sewers, maybe. And I'm sure there's a connection to it at the bottom of this um, parking deck. It's gotta have proper drainage, after all. Okay. Alan, as an experienced special ops spy, spook, soldier, um, do you really think splitting up is the best thing to do? Mm, you're probably right. Uh, no. What is that? Well, we're in a parking garage. Let's get ourselves into a uh, stairwell and away from the vehicle. Let's hotwire a new vehicle. Come yeah. on, we got a walk out of here. here. That's something you can do, Mark. Yep. Let's abandon this one and go find another one on another story. I uh, rolled a seven, eight, nine, ten that time for <laughs> vehicular stuff. How do I? Yeah, Irish Wolfhounds uh, run. Uh, the breed average is thirty-four inches at the shoulders, <laughs> and. Uh, AKC minimum size is 32 at the shoulders and 120 pounds. Ah. Is if you, if you don't match that, you're not a real wolfhound. Hang on, I gotta check something. The the breed uh, the breed has been a uh, placed in existence at uh, 273 BC. So. Yes, I, the current Irish wolfhounds are not unlike the dire wolves of old. Except they look more like dogs. <laughs> when, when, when the Teca Sage Celts uh, sacked Delphi, they were using uh, huge. They were using Irish wolfhounds, and that was 279 BC. Wow. <laughs> well, there's one that almost looks like a wolf. I'm looking yeah. at two. <clears throat> well, these are these are the dogs that the Irish kings used to hunt wolves. Hmm. This is this is the coup of Cú Cullen. Cú Cullen means Cullen who was worthy of the loyalty of one of these dogs. Um, From what I understand. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually picturing um, Alan's wolf form being less wolfhound and more big bed wolf. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Like, like, big. <laughs> big. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I'm picturing. I'm oh, you, oh, you did say it's, 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 it's wolf, not like wolf man. It's not, you're not like no, bipedal. Wolf, wolf. You're like just a gigantic I'm, I'm badass thinking, wolf. When I say dire wolf, I'm <laughs> the dire wolves of Game of Thrones. I don't watch that, so I don't know. Yeah, but they're, they're big. <laughs> Okay. I'm just thinking of you know <coughs> something something like that. Mm -hmm. How do you make the pictures come up? You know that's that's a properly sized dog Ooh. in my book. Don't you agree? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's clearly a dog. <laughs> I mean, it's a big dog, <laughs> but it's clearly a dog. How do you, how do you make the pictures come up? Sheriff's screen. The little dot 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 in the upper right hand corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, Kieran, here's one for you. <laughs> yep.
Because yeah, it is like that sometimes, huh? Mm. <laughs> that would that would be quite an improvement. Okay, anyway, so you are in the parking garage. You have piled out of the delivery van, if I'm understanding correctly, and you're holding up in a stairwell, yeah. which is concrete walls and big a big metal door, stair, metal stairs going up and down, and on each of those floors is another big metal door. And there would be windows, but they would be um, relatively <laughs> small and not really suitable for crawling out of. Well, we were thinking more of maybe uh, hot wiring another vehicle. Oh, you could try that too. Mm. So pick one. What are you gonna do? Uh, preferably one that's got is large, like another van, maybe, but perhaps a minivan or something. I'm sure you can find something like that. Uh, yeah. John Morgan's jogging along with his laptop, and he says, "Yeah, I've got uh, uh -huh. three vehicles out front." And more on the way. <laughs> Is there another exit from this place, or only one? Well, we there's the front vehicle. of the building, which yeah. has a great big entrance with like toll booths, oh, well, we and some one. come in, some go out. Because what we, we may want to do then is to d just dive into a vehicle and just wait. Mm -hmm. Or you can try that optical illusion thing again and send All one. Right. Oh. oh, I was muted. I rolled an 11 for stealing a vehicle. Ah, okay. Uh, cool. Sorry, I, I said it like three times, but I forgot I was muted because I had been coughing. <laughs> All right. Oh, my kitty cat's back. Oh, yep. Why are you yep. not working? The blanket's gone, Kit Kat. Used to be a blanket over here she was laying on, but I put it on a shelf. So, oh, so she you. shows up going, where's my blanket? Where's my blanket? <laughs> okay, so. Mm. What are we doing? Mm. Um, what kind of car are you looking for? A delivery van type or big sedan type? Um, you rolled <coughs> really well, so you can pretty much pick, take your pick. Something big enough to fit me. I'd, yeah, I'd th <laughs> yeah, it's going to have to be an SUV. Just to fit the dog in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I either need a station wagon or an SUV. Um, you know, if there's a nice BMW estate, I'd probably sweep, sweep that up. Something that you know has a very tough, even if it's not armored, at least has a very tough exterior. So if we have to ram more yeah. vehicles, we can do it more effectively. <laughs> okay, you find a minivan, and we're going to say it's uh, an older minivan with like actual sheet metal sides. Uh, oh, make it better. It's somebody's pet project. It's like their, um, what do you call it when you get an old piece of crap car and you make it look like brand new? What's that called? Restoration. Restoration. Somebody has restored like a, a 1950s. I feel so bad about that. <laughs> Somebody, they've lovingly restored a 1950s delivery van that has like the whole thing probably weighs like three tons. It's got like actual sheet metal and all the construction. And uh, you get in that, you hot wire it, it starts right up, purrs like a kitten. It has about like 105 horsepower, <laughs> but because you know it's old, and, but but it's super reliable and very sturdy. <laughs> and it fits the the dire wolf in the back. <laughs> um. Is there an optical illusion that we can put up to make the driver look different than Mark? So that mm. it, when we dry out, it might just be someone else leaving. Uh, 
Yeah, but that's my last. Sh I, wait, help me. I got two more shots left. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to waste science. Science class. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Get me three infrared LEDs, a ball cap, and a battery. <laughs> John Morgan ought to actually be doing this. Um, he pulls you, you, out a tape. Bulk. Wait, he's like. Are you, are you talking about something like this? And he pulls out a ball cap that has a bunch of LEDs along the brim. And uh, he, <laughs> like, snaps, like, a little connector, and they all light up. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Put that on. Now my face is completely whited out. You don't think they're going to stop pretty much anybody leaving this parking garage? Can you make your symbiote encompass the entire van and make it fly? <laughs> like chitty chitty bang bang. Watch her run. Okay. I'm trying to decide if trying that would be a good idea or not. Hmm. Well, one idea is I could just in induce a mass haunting of this area. Just bring on. The, see, see who's who's buried underneath us. <coughs> Oh great! Well, we'll get uh, the, uh, Richard the Conqueror's third cousin. You hear the squeal of tires on concrete as vehicles (plural) enter the parking garage. We're going to bring up some points. Okay, we are we are slowly driving the other direction. The other direction is up. Oh, in that case, we well, are slowly driving toward them, like we're just gonna we're on our way out. All right, let's yeah. Let's see what ha let's see who I can dig up. This is England. I'm sure you can dig up all kinds of things. Yeah, like I say, Richard most the Conqueror's third hit. cousin. No problem. Or just leave it open ended and see what shows up. Yeah. <laughs> Do you realize how many Romans. ancient royals have been <laughs> found under car parks in this country? Ooh, baby! It wasn't box cars, but it was only one off. Eleven on the dice. Plus four, fifteen. Holy cow! Bring it on, that. baby. <laughs> okay, so we've got King Arthur opening our way through. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. Oh, at, pissed at, off ghost in, in this area. At that level, you can drastic. Here's some sample things that you can do <laughs> at that level, and uh, you can teleport one person to a distant world or dimension, or an entire group to the other side of the world. You could drastically oh. and unnaturally alter the terrain or environment. Oh, you could, uh, you can create good. ferocious animal protectors, or uh, you um, can restore... What was people someplace No, no, else? she already did, no, I'm telling, just giving you the scope of kind of things rolling that well can do. This isn't what she did. I'm just giving you the scope of things. So, yeah. badass things. If you'd rolled one more, it's just crazy stuff at one more. Um, yeah. Teleporting an entire group to a distant world, um, restoring health to a dead character, bringing them back to life, like that kind of stuff. If you sure. did one more. In fact, if you spend, you have like two fringe left, right? Yeah, it's either, I yeah, think, I think you had two left. If you spend two instead of one, I'll give you I'll give you that result, which is something I was actually okay. hoping you would do at some point. <laughs> oh yes, 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 I do. Okay, okay. I will spend cool. awesome. two friends. What the hell? I want I want awesome. What the hell? <laughs> All right. Uh, give me just a moment. So, cars are coming up. You're driving slowly out. Uh, they are clearly stopping your path. And they're like parked like like this, like kind of staggered and angled, so that you can't just ram one and get out because it hit the ones next to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fool, you, fool us once, shame on us, or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, people are getting out and are are not going to start shooting at you as you approach. It's not about you. Because really, if you were just some, you know, 
soccer mom on the way home, they'd still be shooting at you. They're going to shoot at everybody uh, well, until they well, find he you. Says he was asleep. <laughs> what? I, got a, I, I just I got a note that I got an email 10 minutes ago from Lloyd. <laughs> Sorry I was asleep. I'll catch you all next week. Aww. Oh, well. <clears throat> well, he missed out. <laughs> yeah, he sure did. Deserves him right. He got shot. Serves him right. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna give me just a second. I'm, rather than show you a bunch of stuff one at a time, I'm gonna upload it so I can show it all at the same time. Anyway, so people start. I'm just gonna fast forward through it a little bit. People start shooting at you. You shoot back. You take cover. Um, you don't think you can ram out. It's getting really bad. You're pretty sure you're all going to die. I thought she did something weird. And then Charlotte spends That's two fringe weird. and succeeds in the biggest and most badass way possible. And I'll show you what that looks like. Just give me just a second. It looks like it looks like Michael Jackson's Thriller. <laughs> Actually, I think you'll be surprised what it looks like. It might not. It might not look like what you want it to look like. In which case, if it sucks for you, I'm sorry and I apologize. And oh, I'll try I'm to get open next time. to. I'm right now. I'm open to all. I'm open to anything. <laughs> okay, fast forward just a little bit, and uh, kind of playing fast and loose with the rules, right? Uh, they're coming in on you, and they're shooting up the van, they shoot out the engine, they shoot out the wheat, the tires, you're not going to be able to be driving very far in it. Hey, kitty cat. I'm so sorry for the guy who so meticulously restored it. <laughs> sorry. <coughs> he just saved his marriage. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, the lovingly restored 1950s uh, delivery van is just in terrible shape. John Morgan is hiding like behind this, this the rear wheel well. <laughs> to try to stay out of the line of fire because he's not really all that much a combat guy. At least without Lloyd here to control him, he's not. Um, as this they... Like he wasn't anyways. As they... Uh, and at this point, there's like two dozen guys. <laughs> They're just surrounding you and just opening fire and it's crazy top. I'm assuming that Mark Savage would crystal up I, and uh, engage. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> hide behind the engine block. <laughs> <clears throat> it is worth pointing out that even in your crystal form, if enough bullets hit you, you will go down. Yeah, no, definitely exiting out the back of the van and uh, putting lots of metal between me and bullets. Okay. You hear... Okay, Charlotte finishes her incantation, and she, she's basically she's just as a general purpose, you know, um, summoning for aid kind of a thing. And knowing how her powers work, you would expect something kind of on the spooky side to show up. So mm -hmm. as she finishes, there's like, it gets eerily quiet. You know that like party tide? Like everybody's talking, everybody's talking, everybody's talking. And then all of a sudden it's just it's really quiet. Like nobody planned it that way. It just worked out that way. Well, she finishes. And at that moment, like three quarters of the guys change clips. A couple of guys, you know, look over their scopes to see what the, so it's like it gets silent for just a second and you hear a roaring engine the kind that's not tuned very well it's just really loud and this, and the squeal of wheels on the concrete and uh, and it's closer and closer and closer and then from behind the cars that are barricaded in front of you a great big 1970s van primered in like four different colors and beat to shit and the windshields cracked and like welded to the front of it is like a bicycle rack and it just <laughs> smashes through and just <laughs> knocks cars out of the way <clears throat> and plows into a, just mowing over like a half a dozen of these guys now good granted there's like at least two dozen of them here it just plows into them and like uh, skids and in uh, spray paint on the side of the van is a big red three so that's exciting <laughs> can you see what it looks like 
I'm sorry, what? Can you see what it looks like? <clears throat> oh, I don't have a picture of that. I'm sorry. Just, just picture a big shitty black primer 70s van that's been beat to hell. You know, I vote for any port in a storm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jumping in the back of the van. Um, oh, it's there's there's still like a, there's still like 18 guys with guns between you and this van. So it's not like it's you know. Anyway, so but I thought it had plowed through them up to us. More, more like plowed them. into. It plowed through the cars and into the guys and mowed over a half dozen of them. But uh, oh, there's okay. there's still a good 18 guys with guns. And we're gonna say how many spin around and aim their weapons at the new arrival. <laughs> Let's roll some dice. I would think a fair number. <laughs> uh, seven. <clears throat> seven of them. A little over half dozen uh, turn around and aim their rifles at this van. Uh, now they just finished reloading, so they are ready to go. But they just reloaded, so they don't. It's not actually their turn yet. Let's start again. Uh, Mark Savage, what are you doing? <laughs> you are. Last I heard, you were all hiding behind the lovingly restored delivery van, uh, trying not to die. So what do you do? Push. We are pushing the van into the people who are still shooting at us. Oh, that's, a good idea. that's super clever. Roll a roll a crystalline uh, symbiote okay. roll. Tell me what you get. <clears throat> Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That is a very good roll. Uh, they did not roll anywhere near that well. So you crystalline up and like and. You know the, the the tires are flat, and you know it's it's all beat to hell. But you you push up forward, and you are pushing downhill because you're pushing toward the entrance because right. you were leaving. So that helps a little bit. Um, so it's it's, it's not really going to roll on its own very far, but the plop, 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 the tires are flopping. And you I don't know, once, when, once you got it going, it might you know leave it in That's neutral kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> You um, feel as you're holding onto the van. You feel more than here. It like hit and then clunk, clunk, <laughs> go over a couple of people. And you're like, ah! You hear a couple of people cry, ah! Oi! My 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 bloody leg! You know that kind of thing. <laughs> just just flow with it. It's the best I can do. <laughs> so there's that. Um, guys with guns. They're shooting all over the place. Um, you know, if these guys were not smart enough to get out of the way of a van being pushed down, down a uh, <laughs> parking deck. We're going to say they were distracted by the new arrivals. Um, actually, uh, guys with guns that's, shoot up actually, a bunch Actually, that's of why only seven of them <laughs> shot at the other one. The others were getting run over. We'll say, uh, we'll say that the guys with guns are doing their thing. And I'll have the new arrivals come after the guys with guns, and then Charlotte will go. Does that sound fair enough? Sort of? Okay. Yep. Side of the black shitty van opens up, and these people uh, jump out of it. And I'll show you what they look like. Like, here, here, go. Meet your rescuers. Well, not rescuers, that's too strong. <laughs> 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 The Rowdy Three. <laughs> Who's the calm one? Hobbs, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's not calm right now. <laughs> um, as they jump out of the van, uh, they've got like a couple of them have baseball bats. The girl has a crowbar. Um, the the black guy in the he's got sunglasses. Why not? Uh, the black guy in sunglasses. Wait, he's, he's a girl. Hmm? Oh, the person on the far right, that's a girl. Hang on. I'll the, one show you in, again. the one in the kabuki makeup's a girl? Yeah. Oh, I just I thought that was just a very effeminate man. No, I knew it was a girl. Yeah. Well, from this picture I can oh. understand the uh confusion. But when you yeah, see her no, I, when you I see her whole body standing there, it's there's there's no confusion when she gets out of the van. She's like okay. a full head shorter than everybody else and she's obviously a girl. Um okay. Anyway, yeah, for her. <laughs> so she's got a crowbar. 
Um, the guy next to her, he's got a baseball bat. Uh, Hobbs, he's got a chain. And uh, uh, the, the shirtless guy with the sunglasses, he's just got his fists. So uh, they, they jump out of the van, and they're like, ah! They're like howling and whoo! Ah! Like just making like, ah! Like that. Dead. Say what? <laughs> I said, I hope they're undead or they're going to be dead. <laughs> Well, they all get shot a couple of times on while they're getting out of the uh, van. But the weird thing is, is like it knocks them back, and then they run forward, and like the girl gets hit like three times, but she runs forward with her crowbar and she just like tackles the guy and hits him in the throat with her crowbar and pins him on the ground, and then she opens up her mouth really wide, and glowing light comes from the guy into her mouth. Oh my she goes, god! Ah, like that. Okay. And that's pretty much what they all do. They just like either they hit somebody and the guy like goes literally goes flying, like um, Hobbs has got the chain. He like whoop, 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 like like grabs around a guy and pulls and it pulls the guy off his feet and he flies through the air and he goes way over there. So they are clearly stronger than normal people, because that they doesn't might, normally happen. That sounds like they really are energy vampires. Right? Uh, it's kind of looking that way. They don't need a machine. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence, hence the guy with the fists. Yeah. Yeah. So they, 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 they basically go to town on these guys. They are still wildly outnumbered, as are you. But between you and them, you basically mop up the rest of these guys. I'm not gonna sit and make you roll dice for the next half hour over that. Uh, but they are brutal and undisciplined, and they howl and growl a lot. I'm a werewolf. I'm brutal and undisciplined and howl a lot. <laughs> cool. So like, <laughs> people apart. It's um, like, like um, Alan pounces on somebody and like tears out their throat or off, tears off an arm or something and howls. And uh, Martin, the 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 guy without a shirt who's not the big black guy, uh, he like like looks over at you and he goes. Oh! And he howls at you too, you know. So basically, they're just really into it. Uh, and I'm assuming between. Okay, I nudge John Morgan with my arm. Are you seeing this? John Morgan's like, I'm gonna stay right here. <laughs> Why don't you let me know when people are not getting killed anymore? Because <laughs> don't want to be one of them. Just gonna stay right here. Hey, I tell you what, I, do. I will work on the cameras. <laughs> And try to divert any reinforcements and uh, keep them from finding us here. I'll make, try to make it look like we're at a uh, we, we've we've left and we are knocking out the cameras on. What direction do we want to go, guys? East, west. The uh, portal is the, the portal's west. west. So how about how about we knock out the cameras going east yeah. and make it look like yeah. we're going that way? Yeah. Okay, that's what John Morgan's doing, and also hiding behind the truck. <laughs> oh, well the truck. Actually, no, he's off to the side hiding behind a car because the truck has slid and rolled and is actually, by this time, has hit Gooch, the barricade of cars. And stop. <laughs> In that case, I'm going to pull out my phone. Okay, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm making a video. <laughs> you don't see this kind of thing too often. <laughs> okay. Even after what we've seen, this is impressive. <clears throat> The whole sucking the light out of their faces and... Like I said, real energy vampires who yeah. don't need a machine. wonder if that even will even show up on the video. <coughs> <sighs> Another good reason to take video. <laughs> <laughs> if they do show up, it'll be awesome. If they don't show up, it'll be information. Mm -hmm. um, Charlotte, what are you doing? You're out of well, French I points. What are you going to do? Of, uh, I can only do basic stuff because I'm all out of points. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I can get a hold of gun, I can at least shoot it. There are guns all over the place. <laughs> so... If I can get the one safely, I can shoot it. Sure. Well, just as soon yeah, as I there's, can. There's one attached to that arm that the van ran over. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> this is That's true. <laughs> you, there's one another arm with another gun. So Charlotte picks up a rifle and shoots at some of the soldiers? Is that the deal? Yeah. 
Yeah, and, right. and you gotta figure it's tough enough getting run over with a, a by a van with you know air in the tires, but when it's just the rims coming down, mm -hmm. I, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's painful. Yeah. <laughs> so Charlotte, roll a shooting people roll. I guess you have uh, some police training, right? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, uh, police, a uh, cop's daughter. Yeah, one and cop's daughter. Hey, right. make a roll. I'm just, just curious how effective you are with your. I rolled borrowed... a nine on the dice, so. Ten. Oh, sure. Yeah. You uh, You haven't practiced in a, quite a while. Uh, and this is probably a bigger weapon than you practiced with at the time. Yeah. But yeah, you, you hit a couple of guys. A lot of tiny little bullets downrange. You, you send quite a few small bullets and you, you hit a couple of uh, soldiers, which it helps. When the dust clears, <laughs> John Morgan um, peeks out from behind a, uh, a jaguar, and he goes, "Hey guys, they the reinforcements are heading east, and they're about three kilometers past us. Uh, it's only a matter of time before they realize that they're not chasing anybody." anybody <laughs> so we probably need to go as soon as we can yeah um uh, is it is it one of their vehicles has the has the blood bath settled down and the blood bath has in fact settled down uh, we should take one of their vehicles yeah considering we've lost the last two <laughs> all right are any of their vehicles? Yeah, because they're not going to have GPS trackers or anything in their vehicles. But yeah, let's just... Uh, now, yeah, let's they just they, they actually... Ellen knows that they probably do have GPS trackers in their vehicles. <laughs> yeah, we don't have time to be digging so you those don't, you don't, you, don't, you don't want one of theirs. You'd want something else here in the, in the car park. And there's tons of stuff to pick from, so it's not like it's... What it's are not our, scarce. What are the, uh, the three doing? The Oh, after all the guys the soldiers are down, they just start smashing cars. Let's go get a car. They like stand on a car and like jump up and down the hood and smash the windshield. They're just going crazy. Hey, let's just go down a floor and we'll steal a car from the floor below. I like that one. <laughs> Let them have their fun. Okay. <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> yeah, where'd you find them? I called them apparently well, I wasn't looking for them in the, but hey they're awesome <laughs> let's go down a floor or two and find another unbroken car down on the floor or two and get the hell out of here I'll change back <laughs> um sure you're, you're fine <laughs> hey kitty <clears throat> so the, you guys go down a couple of floors mm -hmm. or levels of the car park okay and uh, do you get a, a try to find another minivan or a sedan? Or <laughs> Let's find something a little less big since none of us are big anymore. Yeah. Yeah, if you've de wolfed, we'll just grab a regular sedan. Yeah, okay. pick something much Just a. Uh, just a boring economy um, van, a Toyota Camry. Well, no, or something. A, 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 a nice one, like a, you know, an E Class Benz 3 Series BMW. I don't want to be driving a Ford Mondeo or anything. I mean, come on. Okay. A Vauxhall Corsa. Ah, no. Mark, Mark Savage turns his nose up at the first couple of cars you guys suggest. And he's like, oh, there you go. That one over there. That's what we want. That's what. No, no, no. And, he, and as you walk toward it, he tells you in depth. About its transmission and what kind of engine it's got, and he, he hot, hot as he's as he's as he's discussing, you know, how this one's rear differential is superior to the pre previous year. He's like clicking the lock and gets in, <laughs> bypassing the oh, anti theft anti theft system system. Today, on the way home from work today, I was. Uh had a uh somebody had called me on the phone and in the middle of the conversation i just had to stop for 30 seconds because a 1996 bmw v12 two-door with pop-up headlights went by the other direction and i just had to soak in the sound of that v12 going the other way before i continued my conversation mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so yes, things like that do happen. <laughs> so you, you get into the bins, you bypass the uh, alarm and start it up, and you guys mm -hmm. uh, mm. drive away. <laughs> and uh, John Morgan uh, gives you instructions on, like, where to drive to avoid as many cameras as possible. That way, there's not as much of a clear pattern where the cameras right. go out. So he's, yeah. and since you're not actually fleeing from anyone, you can kind of take your time a little bit. Um, it looks like you're driving normal Sunday drive. Yeah. Right, right, right. So <laughs> let me see how well John Morgan does at this. Now the question that begs to be asked is what's going to be in the news the next day about how many cars are trashed in this parking garage? <laughs> oh, some gang came and just totally trashed this garage. Yep. Uh, v vandals. It was vandals. Yes. <laughs> Kids, probably. Well, Okay. Well, I mean, well, you know, honestly, two of them could be East Germanic. What? What are you talking about now? Vandals. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. So, where are you going? What are you doing? <laughs> Just to remind you what you were doing before you got interrupted by the people shooting at you, you were trying to track down Rupert Carrington. Yes. The, we didn't do a very good job of that. The junior assistant <laughs> undersecretary <laughs> to the... We actually uh, found out something of what we wanted to find out, is that there's something about Mr. Rupert that was what caused the death of my team. Yes, apparently... Yeah doesn't work there and he and just showing up at his workplace it, it, it has a whole bunch of of uh, of, of, of uh, um, p a troopers out to shoot you oh yeah. you asked John Morgan earlier where this guy lived mm -hmm. and uh, he remembers now that he's not being shot at he's like oh that's right I knew I meant to tell you something uh, you asked me earlier where this guy lived this Carrington guy uh, well I don't know if he's there, but I do have an address for him. And it's not a parking, it's not a, a, a vacant lot. <laughs> no, well, it's a real address. I just don't know if he actually really lives there. We can drive by it and look at it since we're having a leisurely drive through the city, not being chased by anybody. Let's at least look at it. But my guess is the, the five people who are dead, including my one team member, must have found something out that he didn't want known, and he arranged for all the deaths. And the rest of the team were just collateral damage. Mm. Just like the people in that plane crash that killed two of them were probably collateral damage. This person needs to die. Okay, he lives in the Versace Apartments. It is a luxury apartment building in London. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It's like 30 stories tall. Wow. It's what an un unusually tall apartment building for this area. What floor does he live on? 11th. I'll show you what this building looks like. Looks like that. <laughs> wow. And just hey. in case you are curious, no one who is the assistant junior aide to the assistant undersecretary of the exchequer for the department of blah, 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 can afford to live here. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You think? So. <laughs> yeah. Just in case that was in a question in your mind. Oh, it never was. I'm sure that he really does live there, and the weeny little job he has is just fake. And this person needs to die. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because he, he's causing a lot of collateral damage just to kill five people. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I agree. He has caused an awful lot of collateral damage. You're blaming him? I think you guys have caused most of the collateral damage. No, no, no we were trying to get away. We were no. looking for a smooth escape. Not, he, he's talking about... Uh, about I'm talking, talking about two people air, who died in an airline crash who probably took everybody everybody else in the crash in the plane probably died too i'm talking about my team that had nothing to do with what that one member apparently did that all died i'm talking about any of the other deaths that involved other deaths around them just to get these five guys that's collateral damage all those people all those uh those well okay those guys caused their own deaths pretty much uh, when they when they so when they call when they called up a demon yeah, more than likely. Them too. They all, they would have killed themselves eventually doing that crap. Oh, yeah. So what do you do? Well, Let's I'm not going to be able to probably stay up much longer myself because i got to get a oh, dark Yeah, I say, I say we get to a door, get to the labyrinth, get to a hidey hole. And think this thing through. Yeah. Because yeah. we got to know what we're dealing with because apparently this guy is more than he pretends to be. Especially if you can control one of the higher ups in MI fourteen. Especially if they could tag us like that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, because usually Duck Spooky can't be seen when she does her thing. Yeah. Well, I think he tagged the car more than Duck Spooky. Hold on, Brandon's. I think Brandon's lost his sound. Hello? Oh, there you are. Okay. Please rewind like a full minute, especially <laughs> if what? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, going to the labyrinth, finding a hidey hole, think this over. Because this dude is obviously bigger than what we thought. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they detected me. They probably det noticed you guys, us parked outside. Even if, you know, even if we were like a distance away. Yeah, but even parked outside, how do we know they were? We were observing that building. I mean, we could have been just parked outside yeah. observing anything. And they sent yeah. mega hit squad after us for just being parked outside for whatever. Just being parked outside the building where this guy works. Yeah. Hey, they have a spot. Way too much coincidence for my yeah. Wheaties uh -huh. in the morning. I mean, for all they knew, we could have been watching another building. But they uh, automatically assumed we were watching that one, apparently. Hmm. To the point that they could throw that much resources at stopping us. Mm -hmm. yeah. That quickly. Funky's going on it's here. it's possible, and who would think of this? Probably Alan, because he's actually from here. Um, it's possible they did some kind of facial recognition, maybe yes. even automated, that mm -hmm. one of you showed up on a camera and it popped some alert that got directed to the appropriate, you know, people who just happened to notice. So. Um, exactly how you got noticed and exactly why they reacted with the amount of force they did that's kind of you know up in the air but the the long and the short of it is that you were noticed and a lot of firepower got sent your way yes so our little little weenie paper pusher is more than than he's pretending to be which we already suspected anyway you know you know what I think I think it's a t about time for somebody to send a report into the Templars. Yeah, of course. About us getting jacked like that. Yes, you want to imagine the week I've had. I think I, I also think we ought to uh, send in some information to our new ally, Max, as well. Especially about this little weenie paper pusher. She may want to look more into him for other reasons. I'm game with that, too. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to leave that stuff for next week? Yeah. I think so. Okay. All right, then. Um, I guess we're done. <laughs> I'll do the uh, music and then bid you good night. Here we go. This has been Conspiracy Theory <coughs> with Donald Von Griffin, Karen Torres, 
Mostly Denneberger. And me. Thanks for playing. And uh, see you guys all next week. <laughs> yep. Where well, we pick on the way for this egg. Yes. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night, last.